Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ballroom Mastery. Now, I wanna ask you a question. Do experience overwhelm, stress? Maybe you're feeling a little exhausted because everything's changing on you. You've got new routines, you've got new competitions coming up, you've got a partner who's not practicing as much, ah, right? Or you're not feeling that you're doing as well as you could be at competitions or medals or for yourself as a dancer. Well, this is the lesson for you today and also a reminder for myself. Now, I remember when a student came to me and they experienced the best competition results of their life. For decades, they've been dancing. They have been experiencing the ups and downs of partners that weren't as committed, partners that weren't as uh, there for them, partners that really weren't um, the right fit, so to speak. Now, that didn't deter them, right? That kept them going, that kept them in the game but it wasn't the right match. And now suddenly, after years of practice with the right partner, with doing the right work, they've moved from quarterfinals to semifinals to placing in the finals. And it turns out they just weren't happy with the result. Now question, are they not happy with the result or are they not happy with themselves? right? Where is the real problem here? Does it lie in all the things outside of them like the competitors, the judges, the adjudicators, the partner themselves? Where is the actual happiness, so to speak? Where is the actual joy of the result finally manifesting? Where does it actually reside? Does it re actually reside in the accomplishment itself or the achievement? Well, the answer is no, That's, I don't believe that. I don't believe for a second that it's the external world that is what we are aiming to get validation from. Although it is important to track our progress, to measure our milestones, to know that we are doing better, i.e. going from a semi-final to a final. But why didn't that make this couple, so to speak, happy? Well, I don't think happiness is what we wanna aim for to begin with. I think that what we're trying to do here is trying to understand that we're feeling the results that we get, we've earned them, that we feel deserving of them, right? So it can be sometimes a worth question more than a happiness question, all right? So when you're moving towards what you want and you're experiencing those overwhelm, that feeling, or you feel a lack of disappointment because the results aren't there, well, maybe your expectations are in the wrong place, right? So I said to this couple, first of all, you, did you expect to do better? Yes, was the answer. And I said, oh, isn't that, how, isn't that interesting how ungrateful you are all of a sudden? You know, for decades you've done all this work and then, oh, we should have placed higher. I was like, according to who, right? Like the judges, you, you think they've just been wrong all this time? I said, no, it's very obvious what you need to fix, but you're not willing to do the work. So it, this was a very confronting chat in a way for them because I said, look, you could do it and do much better at it, but you're not willing to do the work. So your expectations, like I expect to place third or second or first versus where you are and the work that's required to get you there is not in alignment. So yeah, you're doing the lessons and you're practicing, but you're not actually changing the way you dance fundamentally to earn that position, right? So you should actually be quite grateful that you're even in because you're not willing to do what it really takes to crack it up there. Now you could, and it's gonna take work, but you've got to reconfigure things, right? So if you're trying to get a better result, but you're not willing to do the work, that's just crazy. Right? That's just like you, what, you, what you expect because you've danced for 20 or 30 years or, or you've got this fantastic partner that you should just waltz in, <laughs> pun intended, to, to a result. You, you gotta be smoking crack, man. Like, what are you thinking, really? Because everybody else is sort of thinking the same thing and just some people are gonna be better than you, right? So you've already gotta do, the, not only do you have to do the work, right? The correct work, to build your skill set, to change your technique, and to improve your choreography and your overall performance to get to the next level, there are people that are already better than you that you have to beat. And you beat them because by your improvement in skill set. You're not gonna beat them by them getting worse, right? And waiting for them to drop off the perch and die and retire. You can only do it through your own work. And this is where the mindset's so important. So you have to align your expectations with reality, okay? You have to look at the world and go, okay, they're clearly better than me. It doesn't matter how long they've been dancing. They just have better skill sets and they're better quality dancers than I am, but I can give them a run for their money. What can I improve myself? Seeing as though I can't change the results, the adjudicators, the examiners, the judges, the people that don't like my dancing, I can improve my dancing. I can improve qualities of it in myself. What do I need to then do? Now that takes a fair bit of awareness and insight, right? Because 
He didn't want to hear that. This is, this is not a conversation. It was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It was more like, mm, you could feel like it was challenging his core beliefs, right? Good, that's what I do. That's what you should do as a coach. You should challenge the beliefs that you hold. You should challenge your expectations. Length of time does not mean that you will get a certain result, okay? Some people will do better in a shorter period. Why? Because of what I'm mentioning in this moment, right? In this next part of this lesson. We've got the expectations lining up, so therefore, what happens? Okay, how do we do that, I should say? If I'm looking at my schedule and I'm dancing one private lesson a week, a group class a week, maybe two, one practice a week, I should not expect that I'm going to become world-class. It's just not, not gonna happen. There's no one that becomes an Olympic gold run, uh, medalist doing minimum, okay? That, that is what a social dancer would do for fun. Not a competitor as an example, okay? So if you really want to improve your skills, you actually have to train virtually every day. If you're really serious, you are training every day, right? And so you don't need to understand that part of it, but you might need to adjust your expectations if they're not matching where, your reality. You should never drop your standards, however. So your standards are, is, my standard of training is that I have a high quality in my uh, frame. I have a high quality in my presence, in my posture. I have a high quality to be on time all the time, right? So your standards don't change, but your expectations have to match what you're willing to do in terms of workload, right? I hope that makes sense. Now, the other part of this, uh, this, this important narrative that you have to, 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 to run within your own mind and to correct as you go along is looking at how driven you are to do the work, right? Like how much do you actually wanna make it happen? So for example, you might say, well, I'll add on an extra practice and an extra lesson. You are going to see a correlation in the improvement of your results. But there's a law of diminishing return. At some point, you might be doing five lessons a week and then you might be practicing every day and then you're just not getting better. That's called a diminishing return. That happens to all of us and we can actually get past it, but it requires a reconfiguration of what you're actually practicing and how you're doing it, then you have to realize that it will take more work to get a better outcome. So that is important if you've been dancing for many, many years and you feel like you've hit a plateau, you might be also hitting a diminishing return. But I doubt that because most people just really don't dance enough, right? They don't practice enough, although they say they do, right? I wanna encourage you to do more, to practice more. Watch the feedback come to you, it's gonna be beautiful. You will love the experience of doing that. Now, the second part of this is the way that you talk to yourself. Okay, so if you're unhappy with the result, if you're unhappy because you're feeling uh, overwhelmed with the amount of choreography or a medal coming up or something like that, you have to accept the responsibility that it's on you to make it better. It's not on to anyone else. It's not to your coach, you can't, yeah, you're gonna wanna blame your teacher or your coach for not giving you routines in time, for, um, for the studio not being open enough, for your partner, you know, being a heffalump when they dance, right? but it's not really on them at the end of the day, it's on you. That is the liberating part of this, right? It's the freedom, if you will, of dance. But it's really, really important that you also have a positive self-talk, right? It doesn't mean that you can't be harsh on yourself in a way if you know that you're not doing well enough, right? So you can certainly have those, those confrontations with yourself if you need, but I'm a big proponent of being kind to yourself, all right? Critiquing versus criticism is quite important here. So rather than tell yourself, I'm a shit dancer, say to yourself, that was shit, or it's not me, it's my technique, right? You're detaching from it. You're not saying to my core being, to the, to the fundamental nature of my essence, I am a terrible human because I fell off balance, because I'm off time, because I'm crap. No, you're saying to yourself, that was crap, and I can fix it with technique that my coach taught me. Well, that was not good, how do I fix it next time, right? And that's a better approach. It's, it's a question of, the way you question yourself. Like, how can I get better versus I'm so crap, I'll never get better as a blanket statement. Now, this sort of self-talk matters more as you get better, right? Because in the beginning, you're a bit naive in your dancing. You don't know what you don't know, so you're all good. You're enthusiastic as hell, and you're cool to go with the flow until you start getting some technique. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, wow, you know what you're not doing right. So therefore, you start to get harsher on yourself. And as you get better, it, it doesn't calm down. It gets worse, right? You get more berating of yourself. So my encouragement to you is to make sure that you keep that self-talk in check. If it works a little bit in terms of being critical to yourself, check it, check yourself. Recognize that, that is specifically the thing that you might think makes you better, right? I know dancers that would come into the studio and they would be so harsh on themselves, but they never enjoyed their dancing. They also didn't go anywhere. Like over time, 
They never did anything with their dancing because they would just, they end up quitting because they were so harsh on themselves. Meanwhile, I'm still around dancing, having fun, going, this is cool, right? Like, what can we do next? Yeah, there's stressful moments. I'm on a studio and I've got my, my students to take through exams and they're feeling fear. And sometimes that comes my way and I'm like, okay, I need to deal with that and help them reassess that and realize it's not real fear. It's imagined fear. And you've got to understand that the narrative inside your head is messing you up right now. You've got plenty of time. And you know, as for an example, instead of thinking, oh my God, I've only got six lessons until my competition. Well, turn that into days. You actually have six times seven, right? 42 days until the competition. You have 42 days of practice, not six lessons, right? See how easy we screw it, right? So the point is, is that this self chatter matters a lot. It matters what you question about your dancing. It matters how you question it. It matters your expectations lining up with how much work you're willing to actually do and then keeping that in check. And then if you get a result that you're unhappy with, you can question it and say, what did I do to be so bad I got this result, right? What do I need to fix? What do I need to improve? Would probably be a better result, a better question, right? The bottom line is this. If you can approach your dancing in a different way, you are gonna find that you dance in a uh, better way, right? You're gonna find you're gonna have a better result, a better outcome. And it's the outcomes that we're trying to chase here. It's the outcomes we're trying to improve. This lesson, so to speak, is not for people who just are happy to do whatever and get on the floor and you know whatnot. This is for people who actually want to improve, to get the most out of themselves. So adjust your expectations to line up with the strategy of how much you're actually willing to do, then how much work you're actually willing to do to make that happen, and then look at deep down inside you, the self-talk that you have when you're actually in the studio. And recognize as well that if you're in the studio for two hours, don't say to yourself, I practiced for two hours, because you didn't, right? You might have been in the, in, the, in the studio from 7 p.m. until 9 p.m. And you can be like, that a boy. Yes, good girl, right? But how long did you actually practice? If you just meandered around chatting to everyone, fist pumping, what's up? Sipping on your coffee going, yeah, day was good. Oh, better practice at 7.30. And then all of a sudden you're like standing there, oh, and you like half ask your movements for like 20 minutes. You have another coffee, it's 8.15, you're back on the floor, oh, better try another routine. You've just danced for like 30 minutes maybe, but you haven't danced, right? You've danced for like 10, <laughs> but you were there for two hours. See how easy it is to screw yourself with this self-talk and be like, but Vaughn, I'm practicing a lot. I'm in the studio six hours a week. It's like, but how much are you actually dancing? Okay, think about it. Because it is the exertion of your body on the nervous system the stretching of your muscles and your nervous system to constantly repeat a task to build it into a habit to make new firing and wiring connections from your brain to your body to then be able to execute on time to get all these things to happen to remember your choreography you need to practice a lot more than what you think you are so therefore be easy on yourself don't say I was there for six hours why aren't I getting it you probably dance for three maybe maybe two and you've got nine dances to go through Okay, nine dances in two hours, right? It's 180 minutes, you're less than 10 minutes a dance, right? Less than 10 minutes a dance. What are you actually expecting from yourself? Do you see what I mean? How easy it is to like ruin your own dancing, your own life with, with the false pretenses you already set up for yourself. So I really, really encourage you to look at the way you're approaching your practice sessions and to be really strategic because guess what? You can't have enough time to practice, I said it. You could have six hours a day, it trust me, it wouldn't be enough. Plus you'd be exhausted and you'd probably burn out. So if you can only do an hour a day, well then how do you best use that time? And that's a better question, right? How do you best maximize your time? And that'll be different for everyone. But it won't be by turning up and doing the same thing every time and expecting your results to change. That's just crazy, okay? You have to be strategic and smart. And it starts with the way you think about it, the questions you ask yourself. I hope you have an awesome day and an awesome time. And until next lesson, visit boreamastery.tv for some more free training and hit up the YouTube channel. Thank you.